complementary to our existing JIRA project integration, you're able to integrate GitLab projects with the JIRA development panel. Both can be used simultaneously. This works with self-managed GitLab or GitLab.com. The JIRA development panel will be displayed on the View Issue screen providing functionalities that allow you to view branches, commits, and pull requests. Let's take a look at the JIRA Dev panel integration with GitLab and how to set it up. Here we start with Healthcare Provider Incorporated. This is where we're going to see our top level group and all of the subgroups and projects that fall underneath that parent or top level group that will take, um, that'll be nested as part of that top level group and will take on uh, the JIRA integration that we're going to set up here. When we look at restorative therapies group, we could see that this is one of the BUs or, pro or, or verticals, and they have several different product areas underneath. If we look at surgical technologies, we'll see that we have several different teams that reside within a GitLab project and um, have their repositories hosted as well as with the, where they are creating issues. So first thing I need to do is go to my profile picture. I'll go to settings and then we'll go to applications. Now. What I'm using here is self-managed GitLab to integrate with Jira.com, so their cloud version. But you can do um, the different uh, options, uh, Jira server connected to GitLab.com or Jira server to GitLab self-managed. Uh, in this particular case, I am, again, using uh, my self-managed GitLab to connect to Jira cloud. I'm going to give it a name, uh, Jira development panel example, and then a redirect URI, uh, sorry, URL, um, where it's going to be uh, your GitLab instance domain slash login slash OAuth slash callback. Um, for self-manage, we'll take the example down here of my callback URL. We'll see that I have gitlab.demo.itp.online slash login OAuth callback here. If you're using gitlab.com, this would be gitlab.com slash login slash OAuth slash callback. I'll select the API scope and I'll save this application and now it's provided me some information around application ID, a secret, and the callback URL. From there I'll head over to Jira. I can see inside of Healthcare Provider Incorporated, our organization. This is one of our Kanban boards. Um, up top I'm going to select the gear icon. Uh, if this is the new modern UI for Jira, it's in the bottom left. So I'll click products, go to integrations, find the DVCS accounts, and then I'm going to choose the link GitHub Enterprise account, which will work for GitLab. And here I'll see a couple of different choices. So I have team or user account. Um, this is where we're going to take that top level group that we see here, Healthcare Provider Incorporated, uh, make sure it matches that URL. Um, group will take that and that is what we're going to add to that top level and all of the subgroups will take on this Jira integration underneath because they are nested under that top level group. The host URL is going to be uh, my URL for my self-managed and then we'll take that client ID which is going to be the application ID inside of GitLab so those are the equivalent of one another. I'll add that in and same with a secret. And then we'll add, we'll get a couple dialog boxes here. Continue, it's gonna kick me back to GitLab admin. I'm gonna authorize this, and then it's going to uh, start to sync those groups and the projects and the repositories that are part of um, all under Healthcare Provider Incorporated top level group. Once this has been completed, it's now pulled in all the repositories for all the different projects of part of all the subgroups and groups within Healthcare Provider Incorporated. Uh, I want to ensure if we're going to use smart commits that these are uh, initiated. Um, it's gonna show last activity uh, with specific repositories. Uh, in this particular case, we can see that there's commits, um, pull requests and issues going on here. Um, if I don't need to use a repository, I can simply delete that and remove it from the integration and I won't have to have that um, viewed or convoluting any um, of the other integrations that I wish to see. Going back into 
our organization's JIRA instance, looking at healthcare provider, this is our Kanban board for a specific project. This is where we're going to see how that integration um, is now built out. Uh, in this particular case, let's take a look at an issue. Uh, this is the issue um, that I want to start working on as a developer. I see my ID here, HPI-28. This is going to be important. Once we go into GitLab and I begin my work and I make my commit, uh, I go over to GitLab. This is our uh, the team that's working on that particular issue. Um, and this is where I'm going to go, uh, let's say, into that repository or make the changes to the existing code that is already there. Um, as an example here, we'll just add a very uh, simple um, non-specific file as an example. And this is where we will use that commit message that we just had. So we're going to go back. We see that HP-28, that's what we need to reference. So I reference that HPI-28. And this is where smart commits will come into play. So I can comment. This is. And that is going to match what transitions we have here. So we have selected for development, backlog, and progress and done. Uh, it needs to match those exactly. So if you've gone in, you've customized it for your organization. Just when you're doing your smart commit, that's what needs to uh, be referenced uh, when writing out the commit message. For consistency, I'm going to make my branch have the same name, or similar, or at least the, the, the ID is going to be similar so I can reference the two. And I'm going to commit that change, and it's going to kick off a pipeline inside of GitLab uh, if we have our CI CD set up. And it's going to off also open a mer new merge request. And this is where I'm going to um, fill out any information around that merge request that I need. And I'm going to submit that. And I will also see that merge or pull request uh, reference back inside of JIRA. So I have my uh, issue here. If I go ahead and refresh that, what I'll see is that um, some web links and activity and comments have come through. Um, this is stuff that it comes with the basic JIRA GitLab integration. But what I need to see is that dev panel over here, and I need to see that transition move from select from development to in progress. Now, with um, with the the integration that we set up, there is a, a, a every 60 minutes, it's going to refresh. Um, and so we need to go in there and make this refresh uh, ourselves. This is an extra step, not necessary if, if you don't need that, but uh, as it stands right now, every 60 minutes, um, JIRA is going to refresh um, those repositories. And if I go over here, refresh my repositories, and then this is the one that I want. I'm going to go ahead and click that. So now that that has refreshed, we can come back over here and um, we can reload this page. And now we can see that that development panel here uh, gives us um, information uh, that's directly connected to GitLab and the branch that we uh, we created, the commit that we made in the pull request. So uh, I could go to that branch and it's going to open that up um, and give me the option to go into GitLab, look at that branch. Um, if I want to see the commit, um, it's going to allow me to go to that commit, go back into GitLab and same thing for that pull request known as a merge request instead of GitLab. So I can go to there, uh, see that pull request um, and get any information uh, that I want and to see uh, how the activity is going or um, collaborate uh, within that, that merge request and um, comment or talk to that developer and see how um, if there's any help or uh, how progress is going. Now something I want to show is that that transi transition also moved uh, this issue to in progress. So um, the smart commit that we made it moved it in progress and um, now uh, I didn't have to do that manually uh, as a developer uh, by just putting that in my commit message it moved it automatically so once this pipeline has kicked off um, sorry not kicked off once this uh, merge request that was just created um, runs and it's ready uh, to be merged I can merge uh, this and it's going to merge in the pipeline succeeds um, 
what that's going to do is it's going to come back into uh, uh, Jira here and it's going to close. It's going to show that this pull request has been merged and it's going to close this issue. So again, taken away from that manual work that has to be done. What that does is it closes it. It makes the, the less work that that developer has to do going back and forth from tools and um, gives a nice uh, integration between these two tools that uh, the teams are using within their uh, own team or their own organization. Next, we're gonna talk about how we can take these issues uh, in Jira and import these into GitLab so you can get your uh, project management into one single application just using GitLab and having all of that information in one place and not have to go back and forth between the tools. In addition to using the DVCS connector as described in this video, you can use the GitLab for Jira app which is recommended when using GitLab.com and Jira Cloud because data is synchronized in real time while the DVCS connector updates data only once per hour. You can integrate GitLab.com and Jira Cloud using the GitLab for Jira app in that Lassian marketplace.